Hello everyone, I'm Tim and welcome to the Dojo of Knowledge. Today we'll be exploring some different karate, karate styles. Style. Buckle up because it's going to be a wild ride. As you may know, karate is a martial art that originated in Okinawa, Japan. It has since spread all over the world and evolved in many different ways. This you already know, but let's dive into the different styles of karate. Karate styles. Oh boy, where do I even start? There are so many different styles out there, each with its own unique techniques, philosophies, and of course, weird names. Let's start with the classics. Shotokan, Goju-ryu, Wado-ryu, and Shitoryu are some of the most popular styles of karate, and for good reason. They have stood the test of time and have produced some of the best martial artists in history. But you already knew that too, didn't you? Let's move on to the more unusual stuff. You know, the stuff that doesn't like walking the beaten path. First up, we have Kisaki Kai Karate. This style translates to tip of the blade, which already sounds pretty badass. It was founded by Vince Morris, who apparently got fed up with the traditional karate schools that were more focused on winning competitions than actually teaching effective self-defense techniques. According to Kisaki Kai philosophy, the sword was considered the soul of the samurai and the blade was revered as an object of beauty and deadly efficiency. And that's where the kisaki comes in. It's a term for the sharp cutting edge of the sword's tip. In other words, it's a part that could really mess you up if you're not careful. So what does this all have to do with karate? Well, kisaki kai is all about taking karate back to its roots and focusing on the combat effectiveness rather than just scoring points in competitions. It's a return to a time where the ability to defend yourself was a top priority and techniques were designed to be as deadly as possible. Of course, this raises some questions. Is Kiseki Kai actually effective in real life situations? Or is it just a bunch of flashy moves that look cool but don't actually do much in a fight? If you're not sure, you can always contact Vince Morris himself. He'll gladly explain his point of view. And training with the Kisaki Kai members is a great way for you to find out about it. At the end of the day though, Kisaki Kai is just another example of the diversity and innovation that can be found in the world of karate. Whether you're a traditionalist or a rule breaker, there's a style out there that will suit your needs and your personality. Next, we have Budokan Karate. <laughs> Budokan Karate. No, that's not a typo. I know it sounds like a fusion of yoga and a garden tool, but bear with me. It's actually a martial arts system that was created by a guy named Cameron Shane in 2001. And just like its name, Budokan is a bit unique. So what is Budokan exactly? Well, it's a hybrid martial arts system that draws from traditional Japanese karate do, Korean Taekwondo and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But here's the kicker. It's taught as non-classical style, which means that it's not really attached to any specific style. It's like a martial arts buffet, where you can just pick and choose whatever techniques you like. Unlike more traditional martial arts, Budokan doesn't have a fixed striking style. Instead, it's focused on self-defense applications, which means that you can use whatever techniques that works best for you in any given situation. And if that situation involves a crazy animal attack, well, Budokan's got you covered there too. Because get this, the system incorporates animal locomotion for mobility. Yeah, you heard that right. You can fight like a cheetah or a gorilla or whatever animal you feel like emulating. But Budokan isn't just about fighting. It's also a philosophy with guiding universal principles. One of those principles is that all mental activity, beliefs, thoughts, consciousness is subjective and temporary. So basically you can't trust your own brain. Great. To really master Budokan, you need to combine yoga for flexibility and mental focus, calisthenics for strength and animal locomotion for mobility with striking and grappling techniques. And let me tell you, that's one heck of a workout. But hey, at least you'll be prepared for any situation, whether it involves a crazy attacker or just a really stubborn jar of pickles. And if you really want to show off your Budokan skills, you can work your way up through the six bell system. White, red, blue, purple, brown and black. As you progress, you'll learn and create unique movement patterns or kata, drawing from all the different elements of the system. And if you make it to black belt level, you'll be a highly skilled and intelligent mixed movement artist capable of using your mind and body for peace or war. So basically, you'll be a ninja, a yoga loving, animal emulating, pickle jar opening ninja. So there you have it, Budokan Karate. It's not your grandma's martial art, <laughs> that's for sure. But hey, if you're looking for something that's both challenging 
and a little bit weird, Budokan might just be what you need. Just don't be surprised if people start giving you strange looks when you tell them what you're practicing. And finally, we have American Kempo Karate. Now, I know what you're thinking. American Kempo? Is that like regular Kempo, but with a side of apple pie and baseball? Well, sort of. I mean, not really. There's a lot more to it. Kempo Karate is often referred to as self-defense, the science of combat when words no longer work. In other words, Unlike Budokan, it might just be your grandma's traditional style of fighting. It's a dynamic system of movement that can be adapted to fit the situations of the day. Because let's face it, your average street fight probably doesn't involve a samurai sword or a spear. The American Kempo system was created by a man named Ed Parker. Now Ed wasn't just a karate master, he was also a prolific writer. He wrote books on Kempo and martial arts in general. And he even came up with a bunch of sayings that sum up the philosophy of the art. For example, the man who knows how will always be a student, but the man who knows why will continue to be the instructor. I mean, I don't know about you, but that kind of blows my mind. Or how about this one? To hear is to doubt, to see is to be deceived, but to feel is to believe. That's some deep stuff right there. And if you're still not convinced, how about this gem? An ounce of logic can be worth more than a ton of tradition that has become obsolete through the weathering of time. Now rewind and listen to these quotes again. Yeah, take that tradition, but let's not forget the most important part of any martial art, actually learning how to fight. American Kempo has its roots and techniques from other martial arts, just like Judo or boxing. And unlike some of the other styles we've talked about, American Kempo is all about flashy moves and intricate forms, because let's be real, who doesn't want to look like a total badass when they're taking down their attacker? And that's American Kempo Karate. It's a little bit traditional, it's a little bit modern, and a whole lot of awesome. And if you want to learn more about the philosophy behind the art, you can check out Ed Parker's book, The Zen of Kempo. Just click the link in the description below. Just be warned, you might come out of it feeling like a total karate guru. Of course, these are just a few examples of the many, many styles of karate that are out there. From Kyokushin to Shorin Ryu to Ishin Ryu, there's no shortage of options when it comes to picking a style that suits you. But here's the thing, at the end of the day, it's not about the style you choose, it's about the effort you put in and the passion you bring to the dojo. Whether you're practicing Shodokan or Kisakikai or even Budokan, what matters most is your commitment to the art and your willingness to learn and grow. So the next time you're feeling a little down about your karate skills, remember this. It's not about the style you're practicing, it's about the heart you bring to your training. And who knows, maybe one day you'll even develop your own style of karate. Just don't call it Tip of the Sloth or House of the Crab or anything like that. And on that note, I'll leave you to ponder the weird and wonderful world of karate styles. If you have a favorite style, let me know in the comments below. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day and as always, thanks for watching.